Well, I think right away you've got to forget about what happened on Thursday night, move forward. And the one thing that struck me from that BYU game was BYU seemed to play harder for the entire 40-minute stretch. You need to come out with a better effort tonight as far as being physical on both ends and out hustling Pepperdine. Exercise the demons, so to speak. Absolutely. The tip out of bounds off of Pepperdine. It'll be Gonzaga basketball to start. Tough place to play there in Provo. And the one thing that I knew going into that game on Thursday night is that LMU and St. Mary's had already gone to BYU and won. That team probably was not going to lose three games at home in league play. Well, they hadn't lost three games uh, you know, in succession in years. So you knew they were going to come out with a tremendous effort as the ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, Eddie tried to hit Harris on the backdoor lob, but a foul called here. And I thought you saw that with the effort, right? BYU was the aggressor on both ends, played a lot harder for consistent stretches than GU did. Uh, and it seemed like GU, you just saw it in their body language, could never get going. And as a result, you saw much of the struggle. Shot from the corner is good for Kevin Pangos. And that's an important shot there for him. Yeah, it's a big shot. Last five games, he's 4 of 20 from the three-point line. You'd love to see him get going. There's Jordan Baker, number one with it. And they go to the post to Darby. Darby got into foul trouble in their first meeting in Spokane early. Baker shot as long, rebounded Sacre, outlet Pangos. Over midcourt in the corner. Here's Eddie, thought about the three. And now they settle into the half court. Gary Bell, screen set by Sacre. Bell moves into it. Too hard off the glass. Loose ball grabbed by Harris, new clock. Pangos into the paint. Pepperdine doing a good job to match the energy defensively here on this possession. Bounce pass. Nice catch, Sacre. And he'll go to the free throw line as Hector Harold was smashed to the floor. Hector Harold is 6'7, 210. Sacre, 7 feet, 265. And that's what happens. Wow. Two guys looking to just hack Rob. It's the defense that hits the ground. You see the strength Rob has on the catch. Does a nice job sealing a good look from the top of the key from Pangos. Foul called on Corbin Moore. That's his first, team second. And Sacre at the free throw line. He hits the first. And you know, you talk about Gonzaga shooting woes, and Pangos not shooting it well from behind the arc. And even though Sacre now is 76% in the free throw line, but for much of the season, that was well over 80. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, everyone knows he had that about that six, seven game stretch where he really struggled on the offensive end, but he started to put it together. Didn't play his, the best game against BYU, but over the last four games, nearly 15 points, shooting 69% from the field. Two on one, Darby to Moore, the finish, Pepperdine on the board. There's good energy in the Firestone Fieldhouse tonight, Richard. You know, every time GU hits the road, you're going to get a good... Harris! You talk about energy on that play. Wow. One dribble and smash. Well, if there's anybody from that BYU game that has something to prove, it's Harris. Played 21 minutes, only seven points, had four turnovers, and just was never aggressive looking to get his offense going. Darby aggressively left hand, no good. Got it back. Taken away by Pangos, and back comes Gonzaga. To the paint, little runner got the roll. Nine to two. Nobody picks up the ball for Pepperdine, allows Pangos to get it all but to the rim in that in transition. Eddie and Bell for sprinting on the wings there and opening up the floor for Pangos. But if you're Pepperdine, you can't miss those bunnies near the rim. You've got to knock those down. If not, you give up those up easy buckets in transition. Baker for three, right in front of Mark Few. Freshman out of Tempe, Arizona, averaging 8.8 .8 points a game. Here's the lob, Sacre the catch. No foul. Here's Bell from the corner. Surprised there was no whistle inside. You see right now, Pepperdine defensively is really going to clog that lane. GU coming into tonight, the last two games, is 3 of 19 from 3. So Pepperdine's going to force that issue a bit and force GU to knock down some of those shots. So far, GU's done a nice job. There's Baker with 15 on the shot clock. Throw it inside, Moore. 
is fouled by Rob Sacre. That's his first, team's first. 16:47 to play here, first half just underway in Malibu. Gonzaga, Pepperdine, Greg Heister, Richard Fox. For courtside, Gonzaga 7 and 2 in West Coast Conference play, trying to pick up their eighth win here tonight. Baker again from three. That one's long. Rebounded Landry. Angles. More out there guarding the point guard. Here's Harris. Double team. Eddie open three. Timeout. Pepperdine. 16-24 to play first half. Well, everything that didn't happen on Thursday night seems to be happening already tonight. They're shooting it well. They're defending it well. Yeah. They lead by 10. Well, offensively, you're moving the ball, making crisp, quick decisions. And right there, an excellent job locating the mismatch. You had Elias down on the low block with Baker trying to deny him the ball. You get the ball down low. You force that defense to collapse. And you're getting wide open looks on the perimeter as you see Elias there going, going up strong versus Darby. Uh, didn't see that kind of strong finish versus BYU. He's doing a nice job responding in, in a big way. And five, Gonzaga, five of six shooting. They're three of three from behind the arc. Yeah, but if you notice, all those looks are coming off touches on the low block. You're forcing Pepperdine to collapse given how much size they give up. And you're getting excellent looks rather than trying to force up tough, contested jump shots. That's what I love about you, Richard What's Fox. that? I can you always just, find a way to get it back to the bench. Yeah, you break it down. Oh, I appreciate it's real that, buddy. To see. <laughs> There's Baker. Kick out, taken away by Eddie. I should say Guy Landry or Guy Eddie Landry. Well, you'd love to see Landry get going. Knocks down a three-point shot. Now six of 18 on the year. We've seen spurts from him where he's been really, really successful, but. He still hasn't quite put it together. That three spot, that third spot on the perimeter, is an area where you would really like to get some production consistently. His offense is important, but you got a feeling as they throw it inside to Zachary again. He'll go back to the free throw line. But gaming package at Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Get a great room and $20 match play. Check out this package and other packages at northernquest.com. Restrictions do apply. So Rob Zachary now back at the free throw line. Hit his first two. He's got two points. A rebound and an assist to this point. Rob playing in his senior year now for Gonzaga. He's 27th all time in scoring. One of the better shot blockers. He's just been a lot of mortar and brick for Gonzaga over his four year career. About as tough a kid as they've had come through the program. A lot of turnover on this roster the last few years. He's been really the one. Consistent piece GU's been able to build around him. He's having a nice year, over 11.6 rebounds. Now shooting over 50% for the year. You know, he's never going to be a guy who's going to get you 16 and you know 12 a night. I think he's doing just about what you expected. Plus, he brings a lot of things that you can't count on a stat sheet like leadership. People forget he came to Gonzaga with Austin Day and Stephen Gray. Stephen left the graduation a year ago. Austin Day's been away for a couple of years in the NBA. He's the lone figure remaining in that recruiting class. Here's Corbin Moore who traveled for Pepperdine. Turnover. Second turnover now for Marty Wilson's Pepperdine Waves. So Pepperdine is going to fall back in that 2 3. Continually trying to eliminate any touches around the paint. Let's see if you can work that around. Get some touches in that high post area to open up some jump shots. He's here. Eddie, tough pass to Bill. Bill drives to the baseline. He stopped. Ducks in. Bounce pass. Tough pass there for Sackler. Way too close. Here's Willis. First turnover of the game now for Gonzaga. Loose ball grabbed by Bell. G on an 8 0 run. Shot is off. Baker. Pepperdine hasn't scored in almost three minutes until then. Baker the lay in. He's got five for Pepperdine. He's going to be a good one. He's got Pepperdine. Good size, too. good size, about 6'3. Can play both guard spots. You look at his play in league. He's bumped his averages up from five points in non conference to almost 13. Hangos knocked to the floor. 
by Ramon Eaton. No call. Here's Willis at the other end. Fast break, two. I'll tell you what, if you're Gonzaga, the last thing you want to do is give up easy buckets in transition to a team at Pepperdine that shoots below 40% on the season. And that's exactly what Pepperdine's getting. They love to get some easy buckets here. Andrew shot for three as well. And now Pepperdine with some momentum. This is Baker. And now he backs it out to set up the play. Sam Gower and Marquise Carter are about to check in for GU. Next whistle. Here's Hector Harold. Ten on the shot clock. There's Moore working on Zachary. Spins, kicks. Baker for three. Actually, that was Harold for three. Ball goes out of bounds. Possession staying with Pepperdine. So Gonzaga hit their first three from behind the arc, and now they've missed their last three. Well, those first three shots were better looks. On your own terms, not rushed. Uh, good passes right into the shooting pocket for shooters. The last few attempts have been a little bit rushed. Pangos in transition. Didn't seem to have a good grip on the ball. And Eddie taking a shot he probably shouldn't take at the top of the key. Sacker out of the game, replaced by Dower. Marquise Carter replacing Landry. This is Joshua Lowry, number 10. Baker drives. Nice dish. Moore, can he finish? Missed it. Loose ball grabbed by Pangos, but Moore had a great look. for three, that one's short. Rebound grabbed by Hector Harold up court. Actually, that was Lowry. Here's Lowry for three, that one's long. Hang goes the rebound. I tell you, Pepper and I are not playing like a team that get beat by 30 in Spokane. No, they're much more comfortable here, and Sam takes the three to the top of the key. GU right now offensively just selling for those long jump shots. And you see Pepperdine in that 2-3 zone. BYU had a ton of success defensively versus GU on Thursday night using that same type of defense. Baker out of control there for Pepperdine, and then Gonzaga throws it away. And a silly tur turnover from, from Carter. You know, anybody else outside of Big, you throw that up to Gary Bell or Kevin Pangos, they can do something with it. But you have to ask yourself when you throw that pass, know your personnel. What is Dower going to do in transition one on one versus a guard? Probably not a whole lot. Hold the ball, let somebody else fill the lane. I think sometimes Marquise tries to make those home run plays, and too often those don't connect. Gary Bell to the bench, replaced by David Stockton. Know your personnel. KYP. You hear that a lot around the game. It generally means the guy can't catch for it. Or just you put him in a position or in, in a spot where he's not going to be able to do anything positive. Yeah, here's Willis. Step back three, rimmed out. Harris with it. Out to Carter. A one on three, and Marquise goes right to the rim and earns the one. will drive home in the 2012 Toyota Camry Kennel Cruiser. Enter today. Foxy, don't apply. You won't fit. Yeah, pretty limited in the kind of vehicles Actually, I could use. what right? was the movie back in the day where I think it was either Kareem or Wilt was in a movie and they showed him sitting in the back seat driving the car? Suppose if you got the front I, seat out. Believe it or not, I had a Honda uh, Civic was my first car. My mother's uh, 1988 Honda Civic on the highway. I'd roll the back window down and put my arm out. So no, you did I did, sort of. <laughs> Will Foster, who was 7'4 at GU a few years ago, drove a car about that size. Wow. Hey, when you need a ride, you make do with whatever it is you can get. I guess Carter hits them both. Uh, we should have gotten photographs. <laughs> Big Will doing that. Got the trap there on Lowry did a good job to get rid of it. Gowan, number 31 on the floor for Pepperdine. Along with Manny Ochenji, number 34. This is Caleb Willis. Ramon Eaton working on Dower. Ball knocked away, two on the shot clock. They barely get it off, and the shot counts by Scowan. Well, that's fortunate. Lucky bounce for 
Pepperdine, but that's a solid defensive effort from the Bulldogs. You just got to come up with those 50-50 plays. That a bit unfortunate, but versus BYU, BYU came up with the majority of those balls. That's something that the staff has talked about is, hey, we can't get beat on those 50-50 plays. Eight on the shot clock now. Here's Pangos. Five. Gonzaga's got to get something going here. Pangos forced to shoot it. Got it away and hit it. Big shot, Kevin Pangos. Yeah. Kevin Pangos bailing out the Bulldogs a bit there. Not a good offensive possession outside of the last 10 seconds. Never got the ball inside that three-point line. Kevin just makes a great play on his own. And that's something where he's getting better and better as the season's progressed despite some of his struggles offensively, is learning to create off that dribble and finish uh, around some congestion in that lane. Pangos now with seven on three of five shooting, and shot clock down to 10 now for Pepperdine. Lowry drives, kick out, but a foul called here on Kevin Pangos. That's his first, team's first, or team's second, I'm sorry. 9.49 to play first half. Sacre and Modest Merninghoff checking in for Pangos and Harris. And Okenji going out for Pepperdine with Corbin Moore, number 44, checking back in. You see Merninghoff there, a kid that the staff continues to give an opportunity. He had some minutes uh, versus BYU, uh, but went 0 of 3 in about two minutes. Some good looks. He's got to knock those down. He needs to understand it's difficult, but as a shooter coming off the bench, you get good looks. You have to knock some of those down. Moore over Dower. That one spun and bounced and dropped. Eight-point game. Knocked away by Willis. We're not playing with more energy right now. Yeah, this zone is giving GU problems. Sacre threw it to the rim, and a foul called inside, and I believe this is on Moore. That's number two on him, and five on Pepperdine. It's a loose ball. Rob comes up with it. You see again his strength just turns right into Moore, and. Bit of a bailout call from the officials. Moore standing straight up. Did leave his feet a bit, but credit Rob. Rob, one of the few guys here tonight for GU that has been able to come up with some of those loose balls despite only shooting four of nine versus BYU. I thought his energy was there. He just missed some easy looks around the rim. It looked like he was rushed, and he didn't elevate enough on some of his looks. I think if he could have a few of those back, he could have put, to put together a great game. Zachary, five of six from the line, all five of his points now in this game coming from the free throw line. Nine point game in Malibu. Right into Sacre and Rob picked up the personal foul. His first, team's third. Willis out. Jordan Baker back on the floor now. For Pepperdine. We should point out Baker averaging 8.8 points a game for Pepperdine, but 12 and a half points in league play. Non conference just five. He's been tremendous here in WCC play for the Waves. Lowry hits the big three. Lowry's first bucket, and it's a six point game. Lowry right back, missed it. Knocked out of bounds, possession staying with GU. I do believe it feels like the energy has dropped off here a little bit for Gonzaga. You agree? Yeah, well, I think once Pepperdine got back into this zone, Gonzaga's still trying to figure it out. Irving Hall. That'll help right That'll there. Help. You get that ball in that high post area, and it forces that zone to collapse just enough where if you have a guy like Dower or Harris 
at that free throw line area. If, they, if they're solid with the ball, you can make those simple plays and get some of those types of jump shots. Carter takes it right away from Scow and ties him up. Possession arrow going in favor of Pepperdine. And two here, you see Pepperdine down at the bottom to a nine. That number right there doesn't look for, good for Gonzaga, but they have games at home remaining against St. Mary's and BYU. Those games will go a long way in deciding if this 11-year run of at least a championship and the, the share of a championship in the regular season continues. Absolutely, and you get LMU at home as well. So you can't discount LMU there sitting that fourth, I believe that was. Uh, they put together a nice season. And they have a difficult team to match up with, particularly with the way that they play. Carter went for the steal. Baker just larger. Able to bring it in. This is Lowry. Diving to the middle. Lay in. Seven point game. Trying to go to Sacre, but he slipped on that low post. And Pepperdine right back with it and playing with a lot of energy. Just saying and it the appears thing. to yep. be confident. Yeah, absolutely. Right now being the aggressor, doing an excellent job with triple penetration, breaking down the GU's defense, and the help for, D for GU hasn't been there on those dribble drives. Baker splits the defender. Drive into the middle, lost it. Or missed it, I mean. And Kenji the rebound and then the clock. But still a, a phenomenal look for Pepperdine. Baker splits the trap. It's from Stockton and Dower and able to get the shot over Sacri. A good look. Scowling for three. Okenji with the rebound, but a whistle. Stepped on the end line, I believe. And you see Ellen Harris back in for GU. You see right here that dribble penetration. Half help from Carter looks to reach in rather than taking that extra step and getting his body in the way of the offensive player. And as a result, that's an easy layup at the rim. You've got to make sure you complete your rotations defensively. It's not enough just to try to swipe at the ball. Sacre. You do that, swiping at the ball, that works. <laughs> wow, good play for the weak side. A nice lob over the top, and Ralph thinks he's got an easy two, but Pepperdine says no. Lowry comes over with a great block. There's Bell working on Scowan and now Murning Home. Stockton. Off the glass, too hard. Knocked around, grabbed by Taylor Darby. Seven point game could get even tighter right here. Not the same Pepperdine team that we saw in Spokane. Much more comfortable and a lot more purpose on the offensive end. Murning Home with the rebound off the miss. Good. That's a nice move. No help from Pepperdine. And you see Darby's one on one on the low block. Darby not really going to be able to do much with Elias. And that jump hook, something Elias hasn't had up until this season, is a great move. He does a nice job, recognizes the help's not coming. He takes his time and gets a good shot off. Well, almost the steal there. Scowling for three. That's long. Berninghoff with the rebound, but. Knocked away by Baker to be Gonzaga basketball. Baker knocked Murninghoff in the head there. He's lucky he didn't pick up the personal foul. Still begging for the ball. And you see Murninghoff getting some extended minutes now tonight. About five minutes is one of one for the field. Knocked down his one three point attempt. But he's been active on both ends. He's a kid I think needs to get more run. If he can buy into doing more than just searching out shots, he has a role on this ball club. Exactly. He posts. And again, he'll go back to the free throw line. This is probably, no, I'm going to say on Lowry, but it's not. Caleb Willis. That's his first. That's six now on Pepperdine. And Zachary going back to the familiar place, the free throw line. The free throw seven and eight. You know, I, I think with Rob, sometimes. A lot of the things he does don't show up, but if you look at the last four games, along with the fact he's averaging 15 and about seven rebounds, shooting 73% from the field, over two blocks per game, 
Uh, and shoot nearly 70% from the field uh, as well. So he's been a lot more effective. Uh, I don't think people recognize that as much as they should, particularly given how well Elias has played on that stretch outside of the BYU game. Coming up, coming into that BYU game, Elias had had two double-doubles. But Rob has been solid in his own way. Seven of eight from the line is sacred. Lead back to nine. Here's Darby. Working on Harris. Harris with a deflection. There's Barrett, open three. Well, Harris with uh, the foul there. The foul is number 20, Elias Harris, first personal. That's his first. Five on GU. Good aggressive play. But I guess you can't push. Push it in the back. Yeah, it's not allowed. No. <laughs> out of the way to grab the ball. <laughs> kind of a, the basics of the game. You've got to establish position prior. <laughs> Darby trouble. Just a tough matchup. You know, Darby wants to try to use his quickness for Zachary, but Rob, despite being seven foot, has excellent feet, can close off that baseline. And, Darby's had a real tough time scoring around the rim versus Rob and Elias. Darby 6'8", 230. Harris, tough pass to Sackler there. A lot of traffic. Elias got a back jump shot. Burning off! Weak side rebound and put back. Tell you what, he, he does start starts doing some of those things. I mean, he's 6'6", he's a good athlete. If he looks to help out in other ways outside of searching for those shots on the perimeter, he's going to get the minutes. There's Gordon Lowry. Lowry tripped. And Harris picked up his second personal foul. That'll be 20 from three and nearly four turnovers. Uh, you knew he'd turn the corner at some point. Tonight, he's done an excellent job making things simple and helping out the Bulldogs. Baker. Foul call here on Bell. And this is going to put Pepperdine into the bonus. So Baker will shoot a one and one, but that's a tough call there on Bell. Both players going for the basketball. Uh, it's a, you know, one of those jump ball situations. It was like uh, in football, the ball's up, receiver and, and, and a cornerback have the right to go up and get it, but you, you can't go through somebody. Well, I think you know offensively, Pepperdine's trying to get it to their man at the top of the key. And I agree with you, that's a tough call at times, but you know, whenever a guy hits the ground, that's typically an automatic foul. That's what we saw right there. First foul on Bell, that's 17 fouls. Baker hits the first one. Pepperdine really struggling offensively now. They have not had a field goal since the 7.30 mark. That's 34 minutes ago. Eight of 23 overall, 35%. In their M.O. all year, they really struggle to find easy buckets and even some of those contested shots in the perimeter. They haven't been able to knock them down all at all this year. Good pass. Running off the kick. Not hard on the floor for the first time for G.U. He sacked a tough look, so got it back. Put back is good. Rob now with nine. You know, only one of three from the field, but seven of eight from the free throw line. You saw right there, stuck with it. And he's got an excellent position tonight. That's been a big reason why he's starting to play better over the last five games, is he's doing a lot more work before he ever gets the ball, before the catch. You see, as we watch Baker, Bell ties him up, Gonzaga basketball. I think feeding the ball to Sacre is a lot like the run game in football. If you want to beat a team in the big play in a passing game, you got to soften them up, hit them with the run. Sure. Zachary's got to get those touches on the low post. Well, if anything, just the foul pressure. You know, he's drawn four fouls, or, or pardon me, I believe five fouls, five of the six fouls versus Pepperdine tonight. Uh, and when you consider the fact those are largely against frontline players, he does an excellent job of forcing guys deeper on that bench to have to come in and be productive. Back on the floor for GU as well. Sacker again. Offensive foul called here. That's the second on Sacre. Just got caught. Double team came late. 
Just, just as he was turning into that right-handed jump hook, Darby came over and with, el with Rob's elbows and as high as they were. That's an easy call for the official, but you know, I think the coaching staff has to be pleased with not only his effort, but GU largely tonight has done a nice job of forcing it a bit and getting the ball inside, and they've gotten some good outside shots as a result. Shackrated a bench replaced by Sam Dower. Pepperdine without a field goal now in a long time. Foul called here on Caleb Willis. And that's 17 fouls on Pepperdine. His second. A minute 57 to play first half. See right there, right hand on Eddie's right hip, just kind of shifted him over. Good eyes from the official. Missing the first. It's a Pepperdine ball. Pepperdine has missed their last five field goal attempts. They had a great stretch there about the middle of that first half where they were getting the ball to the rim off dribble penetration. As of the last five or six minutes, everything's been out on the perimeter for Pepperdine. And We've seen how much they struggle knocking down outside shots. Baker driving, slip. Send it out to Lowry. Little move from 18 feet. Okenji with the rebound, and he's fouled here by David Stockton. The foul is the number 35, Sam Dowell. Check that, it's on Sam Dowell. Stop it there, contesting that rebound. That's what it looked like for my Free throw off by Akenji. Rebounded by Eddie. And a foul called on Okenji. Dower had gotten deep position. So Sam now at the free throw, free throw line, Gonzaga leading it by 13. And Dower yet to score a Sam point. That's what Sam does. I was just thinking Sam he's scores. such a second half player. But if he's not well, scoring, he's not really helping the team. Well, well, that's what he does. Yeah, he's not a guy who defensively has a big presence yet. His rebounding has improved, but that's not uh, a strength of his. But. You know, I, he's such a second-half player. It's almost like during that first half, he's just getting the feel, getting comfortable. And in that second half, he's so much more productive. We've seen it time and time again. Coming up at halftime, a special look back at the 0506 Gonzaga men's team. We'll also bring you the first-half stats and highlights that's coming up at the half. Again, football analogy. Keep giving them the ball, run game, run game. Weakens the defense, and then you get the big home runs in the second half. Absolutely. Thanks, Richard. I concur. I'm with you. It's Super Bowl weekend, man. It's I love it. Very agreeable. It is Super Bowl weekend. It's football analogies. Under a minute to go first half. Hector Harold, number 21, with it. This is Lowry. The switch with Hart defensively. Lowry spins right into Hart. Shot away, no good. Tipped out and out of bounds by Gary Bell. It'll be cup and nine basketball. New clock, about a second and a half differential between the two clubs. Lowry to Harold, and now Baker. Pepperdine going to drain this clock. Down by 15. Do you agree with this? Absolutely. Well, they're in the locker room off of me. Harold. Shot is off. Rebounded to Kenji. And 
Kenji to the free throw line. I'll tell you what, Kenji's going to work tonight. That's five offensive rebounds. Gio has had no answer for him on the offensive glass. And here's a kid on the year. He's had some nice moments, but only plays about seven minutes and averages about a rebound and a half. He has done an excellent job tonight in some extended minutes here in the first half. Gio just unable to block him out. It's Ochenji. Ochenji. Did I mispronounce it? No, I was. So you could, you ergo, I did probably. <laughs> you could apologize. It's Ochenji. And he misses the front end. So, Merninghoff back on the floor for head coach Mark Few. One of two, 14 point game. And now a whistle. The clock started before Stockton had touched the ball. So we'll have to reset it to 10 seconds. And now Pango's going to check in for GU. Mike Hart out. Stockton, Pango, Dower, Merninghoff, and Bell. For the paint, kick out, running off for three. That's long. Loose ball. Pangos got it away. No good. He did. Gonzaga with a 14-point lead now to start the second half. Pepperdine basketball. They close that first half, missing their last 10 field goal attempts. Lewis almost had it taken away by Bell. Now he's backing down inside, poked by Pangos. Bell creates space and hits. Their first make in 11 shots. And a badly needed bucket. And Willis, you know, a big body kid there at 6'2", about 220, probably more like 230. Uh, Bell does a nice job, but just, Willis is too strong down there on the low block. Excellent look. Pepperdine without a field goal in the final seven minutes and 30 seconds of that first half. Here's Bell. Bell is wanting it. Kick out. Pangos. Deep three. Good. Can't do that if you're Pepperdine, Greg. You, you've got to force Kevin Pangos to put the ball on the floor on his catches. He's just too good a spot up shooter. You know, a lot of teams have realized that if you force him to put the ball on the floor, he's not as effective scoring the ball. Got oh, inside by Moore. Goes right back at the other end for GU. Here's Harris. Landry thought about the three, and now Sacre. Look at Moore. Trying to find leverage against the big fella. Knocked out of bounds off of Landry. It'll be Pepperdine basketball. You know, on that catch, you know, Rob gets good position on, on Moore, but you have Harold Hector looking to dive on the ball when Rob puts the ball on the floor. Eddie needs to cut through. Right to the front of the rim, either Rob can dump it off to him or it's going to force Hector to clear out and give Rob that one-on-one -on, -one on the low block for Moore. Moore trying to back down on Harris now, and then he threw it out to Baker. Moore, feet were on the line, that's well short. Probably not the shot that Pepperdine wanted. No, Moore's got range on the year 11 of 28 from the three-point line, but not really his strength. And that's a tough shot. Feet on the line, contested. Elias Harris does a nice job. You can get a better look if you're Pepperdine. Just have a little more patience offensively. Harris takes the three, drives on Darby, threw it up and in. And a chance for three for Elias Harris. Harris now with six points, three rebounds, a couple of assists. And Harold picks up the first foul of this second half. That's his first in this game. Darby's got to honor the pump fake from Harris at the three-point line. Elias 17 to 41 on the year. You don't want to give him those easy looks. And Elias takes advantage, gets himself the end one. Unfortunately, can't make knock down the uh, the free throw. But Elias much better offensively here tonight than he was on Thursday night versus BYU. More. Jump hook over Harris is good. Back to 13. Landry driving that baseline, and he's fouled by Harold. So Harold picks up his second personal foul real quickly here in the second half. 
Eddie goes to the free throw line. So tall. <laughs> You're not talking about you, are you? No, no. I don't think How do you so. know? Well, I mean, I'm not standing possible. up, so, you know. But it's possible. They're behind you. <laughs> it's true. Even sitting down, you're kind of hard to see over. Try to be focused here, Greg. Try to focus. <laughs> Drown out the crowd noise. Uh, it's part of the fun with the crowd noise. They crowd to the play LA crowd, but the, you know, the gym is filled up here largely. As we enter the second half, it's been a good crowd. It is Los Angeles. And the sun just went down. Which means the beach is empty. And Eddie with uh, a near turnover. The takeaway there. And Moore now has it poked away. He runs it down. Back to Willis. 15 on the shot clock. Taken away by Harris. Willis to beat. And he's fouled by Willis. So Willis picks up his third personal foul. Let's take a look there. Pepperdine just trying to force force the ball into Moore. Elias does a nice job of closing down the passing lane. And a smart foul from Willis in transition. Force Elias to knock down a couple free throws. But for Pepperdine, it's important you continue to move the ball, swing the ball from side to side, force that Bulldog defense to shift. And if you just keep that ball on one side of the floor, you're much more, much easier to guard offensively. There is now one of two from the line. Three rebounds, seven points. And that one stumbles out. All the talk about Baker in the first half for Pepperdine. He was two of six from the floor, seven points. Good at three assists there. Now in the corner. There's Ramon Eaton. Hangos knocked it away. It's off at of GU. It'll be Pepperdine basketball. Ten on the shot clock. And Lowry now will have to inbound it through Rob Sacre. There is a good image of kind of what it's like. Baker. Turn the ball over. Trying to bait the official into calling the block. <laughs> gives him a look. It is Los going, Angeles. Going the other way. We're close to Hollywood. Uh, not quite the acting skills yet. Only a freshman. He'll learn. He'll get that call down the road. There's Bell. Eddie to Harris. Open shots here, and then Pangas takes the contested one. Baker does a nice job of recovering defensively deep in the corner. You see how long and athletic he is able to recover and get the block. Darby, kick out. Moore from the corner for three. Well, we mentioned he can do that. You know, on the year, shoot 39% from three. Well, that's about as tough a shot as he's taken all night. Rob out there, good challenge, it's better offense for Moore. Harris, ball kick by Baker. And we've got a timeout, 15.36 to play in Malibu. Gonzaga with a 12-point lead, Corbin Moore. He may play the five, but he's got that kind of range. 12-point. Uh, taking care of the basketball is GU. Season's getting long now for any coaching staff. The end of January, early February, well, absolutely. they're ready for March. Yeah, absolutely. And particularly with the young backcourt, like you see at for GU, you know, there's going to be some growing pains for any player. But for young guards like Bell and Pangos, for, G for Coach View and his staff, uh, it's important that those kids continue to remain fresh mentally more than anything, because this can really grind you down when you get down in elite play. Exactly. 
Nine on the shot clock. Sacre off the glass is good. Are you concerned at all? You hear the old adage in college basketball that transfers and freshmen are only good for half a season, and then the fatigue sets in. Yeah, you always worry about a freshman hitting the wall, and you've got two guards. Yeah, I, 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 you know, Kevin, I'm sure at times, you know, has felt those struggles between the last few games, but he's such a mentally tough kid. And I think Gary Bell's been good all year. And as you see, another three knocked down for Pepperdine. Pepperdine now five and six to start the second half. But I, you know, I, I think both those kids have done a really nice job of fighting through some of that adversity that any freshman is going to face. Stalin with his second net from behind the arc. Harder driving the baseline, missed the shot, couldn't finish. And back comes Jordan Baker with a head of steam, spins, knocked away by Bell, and picked up by Lowry. Makes from behind the arc. Here's a kid who over 70% of his shots come from behind the three-point line. Carter's lost him on two consecutive plays defensively. You can't afford to do that. You gotta get up into him on his catches and force him to put the ball on the floor. Carter lost it out of bounds. Eight-point game in Pepperdine basketball. And Carter out. Well, let's see here. You can't see it on the on the on the uh, replay, but you know, Scowen just reads the fact that Carter tries to cheat the screen, go under it. He stops his cut, takes a step back from beyond the three-point line. Nice recognition from Lowry. And Scowen gets a wide-open look from beyond the three-point line. Here's a kid who was a tremendous shooter in junior college. And while it hasn't necessarily translated consistently at this level, he can, he can make those open looks. Baker hits and Pepperdine down an 11-2 run. And it's a six-point game, timeout, Gonzaga, and 600 rebound plateaus in their careers. Is it 1-8, 6-4, or 2? Text your answer to 27297 to win free food from Arby's. We'll have the answer a little bit later. Yeah, 6,000 rebounds would be a lot of rebounds. Did I say No, no, that's what they have on the screen. <laughs> 600 rebounds. Oh, extra, extra zero there. Yo. Yeah, 1,000 points, 600 rebounds. Still impressive numbers. Absolutely. Joey Vermillion, I think, has the most rebounds, over 1,700. He's more Moore picks up his third personal foul. That's three, four team fouls now on Pepperdine. And Stockton inbounded it. You see Pepperdine now back into that 2 3 zone. Where they had some success with that there in the first half. Let's see how GU handles it. Sacre almost lost it, missed it. Scowling with the rebound. Pepperdine trailing by six and with the ball. There's Lowry open three. Pepperdine with the momentum. Bell driving, missed it, Lowry the rebound. And a chance to tie for Pepperdine. Flipped away by Stockton. Okenji. Okenji checking in for Pepperdine. So is Mike Hart. Gary Bell going out. Mike Hart in the game for the Bulldogs. Obviously defensively his effort on the glass, but I think more than anything, trying to get GU's energy up right now. Pepperdine just playing harder on both ends, a lot more energetic. You've seen it right now during this run. Stone drives, picks out. This is Lowry. Drives, there's a charge. Blocking fall. Foul on Stockton. They're saying. Stockton was shifting over to his right, I believe. Looked like he was outside that half circle, but from our angle, tough to tell. But regardless, a nice play from Lowry there. It's by Michael saying, look, the official saying that David's shifting over to his right. Looks like a clean play, but nonetheless, things continue to go Pepperdine's way. Only down two. Gonzaga has defeated Pepperdine. 
21 consecutive times. And right now, Pepperdine with the momentum, and they're scouring, knocking Sacre to the floor. And a foul called on Nicholas Scowen, the sophomore out of Norway. That's two on Scowen, five on Pepperdine. I don't see Rob Sacre knock to the floor like that very often. It's hard. Stockton driving the baseline into the corner. This is hard. Tipped away. Should be Gonzaga ball. 19 seconds left on the shot clock. I'll tell you what, that zone for Pepperdine much more active here. In the second half, they've extended it out past that three-point line, and they're getting right up into the ball handlers for GU and trying to eliminate some of those passing lanes when that ball gets into that high post area. Much better effort here defensively for Pepperdine. Pangos over Baker. That's a big shot for Kevin Pangos. He can't get inside the zone to shoot over the top. And an excellent look from Pangos. Baker just had his hands down, allowed Pangos to spot up and knock down the tough three. Five point game. Lowry driving. Okenji. Mid range game. Three point game. Pepper and I playing with a lot of energy and confidence right now. They're two and seven in league play. And they're pushed there. Oh, oh absolutely. I was a red shirt that year at GU. And, uh, those, all three of those games were classics. And I tell you what, Pepperon had it rolling with Westfall here for about four or five years. They had several pros on their team, either guys playing in the league or guys playing high level overseas. And near steal by Baker there. I think. Physically, they may have been more talented than the Gonzaga well, team. Better athletes all around, there's no doubt about it. But when you got Dick out and step in the backboard, you like the chances. There's Harris from the free throw line. So you finally get something in that high post against his 2-3 zone here in the second half. Elias with confidence steps up and knocks down that jump shot. That's the weakness of that 2-3 zone. Gonzaga has to, make, has to make more of an effort to get the ball in that spot. GU right now answering back with their own 2 3 zone, trying to mitigate some of those threes for Pepperdine. The deflection by Stockton is run down by Darby, 15 on the shot clock. Pepperdine has not missed from behind the arc in the second half from 90% from the floor. Baker got stuck. Pick out his Lowry. Shot on his way. Good. Over Merninghaw. Four point game. Three-point game. And a foul call here. Ochenji with his second personal foul. That's seven already on Pepperdine. And Zaga in the bonus the rest of the way. That's a big story. GU always likes to get that bonus if they can. Within those first ten minutes of a half, considering how much foul pressure they put on teams on their post touches, that can lead to a lot of next, a lot of extra opportunities at that free throw line. Stockton one of two. And now some pressure. Knocked away by Burning Hop, but Baker ran it down. Stalin. Chelsea out to Lowry, number 10 on the shot clock. Lowry on the elbow. That shot was short. Merninghoff with a long rebound, and now Pangos with it. Pepperdine, a great job getting back defensively. Stockton open three. That shot is long. You know, he's open, but that's just too quick a look. Right now, you're up four. Work the ball around a little bit. You can get that shot if you're David. Without any possession. Coach Few right now talking to him saying, hey, we have a little more patience offensively. 
Good shots early in the clock. Don't typically help you out offensively. Marty Wilson with a timeout for Pepperdine. Uh, gee, they've had a lot. They've had a tough time the last four possessions as Pepperdine versus GU's 2-3 zone. Uh, I'm sure he's trying to re reiterate to his ball club, hey, guys, let's focus on that high post area, short corners, set some ball screens, and move the basketball. You have to force those zones to shift. If you just keep the ball on one side of the floor, you make yourself much easier to guard. But you know, Richard, the big problem might be de defense. I mean, we saw it Thursday night against BYU. The Cougars shot 54% in that second half. Right now, Pepperdine 10 of 12 shooting, 4 of 4 from behind the arc in the second half. And comfortable looks. I mean, they've knocked down a, you know, Lowry's knocked down a couple tough contested jump shots, but for the most part, they've been comfortable looks. Guys are getting the ball in rhythm without a hand in their face. Uh, the defensive effort has not been the same continue here in the second half, there's no doubt. It's the ebb and flow of a season. Defense with the strength of this team a couple of games ago. Moore, shot for three is gone. That's the first miss from behind the arc this half. And then Gonzaga threw it away. Baker with it. And another opportunity for Pepperdine. Here's Ochenji. Laying off the glass. Two-point game. Loose balls, Greg. Pepperdine comes up with it. They get two easy points. If you're GU, you need to come up with those plays here on the road. It's been all Pepperdine here in the second half. There's Dower in deep. Jump hook. Good. That quiets the crowd. Back to a four-point game. Pepperdine now with 22 points off their bench. Again, Gonzaga coming in as the deep team. Absolutely. We saw it versus BYU. GU outscores BYU 37-12 off that bench. That hasn't been the story here tonight. Pepperdine's bench has stepped up in a big way. Baker spinning on Stockton. And a foul called on David. And that'll put Baker at the free throw line. David doesn't like the call. The foul is the number 11, David Stockton. Third personal, second team foul. That's number three on David. Jordan Baker. And that's uh, three team fouls on Gonzaga this half. I'll tell you what, Greg, you look at Baker, Anthony, a freshman, Anthony Ireland, a sophomore at LMU, Hilario, a freshman at BYU, obviously Bell and Pangos from Gonzaga. You can go on and on. The backcourt talent, uh, that freshman, sophomore class with the WCC is about as strong as it has been over the last 10 years. It's going to be an impressive league to watch in those backcourts over the next three or four years. And a couple of guards at San Diego. Sure, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's really in particular has it's been really impressive scoring the ball to the three point. Baker. Missed them both. And as we hit the eight minute mark in Malibu and we've got a four point game. This game was comfortable several minutes ago for GU. And Pepperdine just got red hot. Four three corners. Got some stops. Just like that, it's a close game. Dower missed that one. And Lowry with the rebound. Scowen been a, a very dangerous shooter for Pepperdine in this game. Moore backing in. Blocked by Dower, grabbed by Bell. Two on two. Hang goes right to the rim, and the floater goes. Six-point game. Another nice play in transition from Hang goes. Bell gives it up. Nobody picks up Kevin with the ball. And just nice little floater in the lane. Pepperdine's missed that a couple times tonight, just giving up those easy looks. Scowen, I'm not sure. And this is Hang goes. The Sackley post for him. And a whistle. Foul away from the ball. This is on Sacre. 6.48 to play at Pepperdine. Mark Few trying to get some energy into his team. They lead Pepperdine by six. Pangos with a beautiful finish here. Our cost cutters play of the game. We'll be right to your answer to tonight's Arby's trivia question. How many Zags have reached both the 1,000 point and 600 rebound plateaus? It is eight. Sacre and Harris became the seventh and eighth players. And 
for a limited time, get two fish sandwiches for only five bucks or a fish combo for five bucks. Arby's, it's good mood food. So I wonder who the other six are. I know it's Jerry Vermillion, Violet, gotta be Turia, Violet, Calvert, Calvert, Batista. Batista, two years ago, he got there? He scored a lot of points. And you know he was good for, what, nine rebounds? At least. Scowling. The shot looked good leaving his hand. Gonzaga leading by six with the ball. Hangers. Hangers into the paint. Another runner. Missed this one this time. He's hit a few of those. That's a good look for GU. You swung the ball three times. Got the ball screens. Kevin gets a nice little floater about eight feet from the rim. Like you said, Greg, he's knocked a couple of those down. That's a good look. There's Baker's shot that's off. Eddie runs down the rebound. I should make the correction. We were talking in the first half about the movie in which was it Wilt Chamberlain or Kareem that was in the car sitting in the back seat? I've gotten plenty of text messages now. It was Bubba Smith, the Hall of Fame defensive lineman for the Baltimore Colts, and it was in a, in a movie. It wasn't a basketball player. It was Bubba Smith, who was like 6'7". You're like 7 foot 10. You must be sitting in the trunk. Oh, foul called here. Crowd really liked the block there by Moore. The foul is number 31, Nico Scowan. But Scowan picks up his third personal foul. The last three or four possessions, G, a much better job offensively versus that 2 3 zone, swinging the basketball and getting some action to the rim. There's some confusion here. Uh, looks like with the officiating. And that's 18 fouls on Pepperdine. Mark Few asking for an explanation now. Eddie hits the front end. 5.23 to play. Harris checking in. Dollar going out. That's me. I guess he was in the act of shooting. I missed that. Ochenji out of the game for Pepperdine. Replaced by Taylor Garvey. <laughs> you know... It's not what they say behind it. It's the fact that you can hear them. Yeah. It just, it's evident that there isn't much noise in here. <laughs> so when one voice stands out, you know. Yeah. It's exactly. not what they say. It's the fact that you can hear them the time. <laughs> Nearing the five-minute mark, here's Baker. Down, open three. Harris had fallen down. He turned down the shot. Baker driver. Threw it inside. Loose ball grabbed by Pangos. Gonzaga now starting to widen that lead again. Back to eight with the ball. And kicked by Lowry. Gonzaga on a 6 0 run. Well, they've settled down offensively. Pepperdine has had a really tough time. Trying to solve that 2 3 zone from GU. And primarily trying to attack from that perimeter. I mean, Baker had an excellent look at the rim, passed it up, trying to fit it in too tight a window. As you give it the easy layup inside to Eddie off a nice inbounds play for the Bulldogs. But if you're Pepperdine, it's just getting that danger zone. Things are getting away from you a bit here with 4 30 left. Yeah, back to double figure. And timeout, Pepperdine. Pepperdine. Baker had thrown it to Lowry. Lowry had turned his head. Good thing Marty Wilson was looking. <laughs> well, timeout, 4.27 to play. This young upstart Pepperdine team hanging in there against uh, the 24th ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs. Well, I tell you what, if this game teaches you anything, it's that don't expect the same team that comes up and plays at home early in the year. You know, the San Diego's, the Pepperdine, Santa Clara's of the world to be the same ball club you play on their gym. And obviously, these teams play a whole lot better at home. We're seeing that here tonight. 
And there you, you see the historical significance now of this run by Gonzaga. 11 consecutive years now, at least a share of the regular season conference title. They're 7-2. St. Mary's is 11-0. They have a game left in Spokane. Even if Gonzaga wins that game, Gonzaga still has to win the remaining portion of their schedule and hope that St. Mary's loses another one. I mean, they're up against it right now. Well, absolutely. And the way St. Mary's is playing, it looks like it's a tough task to get that done. And another turnover. Angles. Eddie, finish. But it should be pointed out that Gonzaga has been in the same position a couple of other times over the last five years, and it's turned out in their favor. 2008, I want to say, Santa Clara had a two-game lead into the last weekend and lost both games as the Darby gets the... I will say the weather would never get tired, that's for sure. Taylor Darby at the free throw line for Pepperdine. And he can't convert on the three-point play. Ten-point game. Eddie tried to go back door to Harris and it was kicked. So Gonzaga basketball here with 20 on the shot clock. Dean missed it, Sacro with those big tough hands. The rebound and the finish, 12-point game. Sacro now with 13. And it's opportunistic, you know, he camps, his, camps himself right there in front of the rim on those drives. Gets so many rebounds, just being at the right place at the right time. There's more. That's a good-looking shot when it leaves his hand. Absolutely. No quit here with Pepperdine. You know, with the effort they put forth tonight, they're going to play through the last three minutes here. GU needs to continue to be crisp offensively, be patient, but search out good shots, particularly some shots around the rim. You get it. Twelve on the shot clock. Angles working on Baker. Here's Eddie for three. That's a big bomb from the corner. Second three of the night for Eddie. Now four of five from the field for 13 points. Playing the way this staff thought he could play when he first got to GU. We'd love to see him get it, put it together. We've seen glimpses of it. We're seeing it here tonight. And Darby earning a trip to the free throw line. As Rob, no, it's not on Rob, it's on Eddie. The following is up the so Eddie picks up his first. That's five team fouls now. And Darby hits the front end. Time now to announce our Subway sub of the game. Attention Subway fans, for the month of February, get any regular foot long for just five bucks from the steak and cheese to the chicken and bacon. Any regular foot long, just five bucks only at Subway. Proud sponsors of the Gonzaga Bulldogs. And tonight's Subway sub of the game is Modest Merninghoff. Merninghoff with five points on two of three shooting. Ten point game again. Gonzaga trying to get to 18 and four tonight. And eight and two in conference play. Someone asked me where the other day again. What's wrong with Gonzaga? After their loss to BYU. Stockton, great finish inside. And I said, there's nothing wrong there. 17 and 4. <laughs> Not a bad start. And you got two freshman players over 30 minutes a game in practice. No doubt. Corbin Moore, that's a deep three, and he's never hit three in a game in his entire career. And he keeps his team in the game with that shot. 
I love the game of basketball. You just never know. Corbin Moore has never hit three three-pointers in his career. Oh, he's, he's put together. I mean, you can look up and down the roster for Pepperdine. Guys are having career years. You look at Corbin Moore. He's just a senior name one. Yeah, senior. His first career, the first three years, less than four points per game and four rebounds. Uh, this year, nine and a half points, eight and a half rebounds, which is second in the WCC. So he's been tremendous. Time now to announce our player of the game presented by A to Z Rental. No job or is too big or too small with seven convenient locations. We rent everything. Let A to Z Rental be your most valuable player for all your rental needs. Tonight's player of the game, Kevin Tangos. 15 points on 6 of 11 shooting. 3 of 6 from behind the arc. 4 rebounds and 1 assist. He's our A to Z Rental player of the game. Tangos with the ball right now. Got it to Stockton. And a foul call there on Taylor Darby. And that stops the clock with a minute 14 to play. The foul is at number 43, Taylor Darby, third personal. It's good to see and Devin Pangle step up in a big way. You know, we, we, we talked about it a couple times there uh, in the first half. He's really, really struggled the last five games. But you, know, you, you and I, Greg, got to know him a little bit. He's a tough-minded kid. Yeah, for sure. You know, he's not a kid that's going to dwell on it. He's going to continue to find a way to be successful. And, you know, he's responded in a big way, particularly after maybe playing his worst game as a bulldog down there in Pro Bowl this, you know, this past Thursday. Stockton hits the front end, and that pushes it back to a 10-point game. Well, I think when he started his career with a 35-point effort against Washington State, Everybody slapped him with a tag phenom. He's been a really solid, consistent player for Mark Hughes, a freshman. As Darby gets inside, and that's really all you can expect out of a freshman. Solid consistency. Jerry Bell now is fouled by Baker. There's 52.5 to play. Well, I think when the season's said and done, you, you look at Bell, Pangos, and I think you can throw Stockton into that mix, too. A guy who obviously played uh, tremendously well towards the end of last season, but this is his first year playing extended minutes. All three of those kids, sophomores and freshmen, have been, in my opinion, much more productive, or more productive than I think the coaching staff could have imagined or hoped. All three have been uh, really, really impressive. And, like a lot of programs in the league, you've got an excellent backcourt to build on going forward, and I think G will do that. And you, when you talk about freshman guards making a real impact, I mean, Blake Stepp, obviously his name comes to the forefront right away, but I mean, he had Dick out with him, one of the great, savvy players in the history of the program. Pargo had uh, some veterans on his team. I'm sure, Rivio was there with him as, as he was growing up. Bolden was the same way. These two guys are on the, out on that limb by themselves. Absolutely. Ten point game, shot off, real good by Baker. Moore picks up that loose ball, got it to Lowry. He fires a three, that's... Needs <laughs> some reinforcement on the backboard quickly. 31.6 seconds to play. Pepperdine passes an awesome start. It just so happens they play their their two worst games in the league against the guys that they've got to beat. Scowling missed the shot from three. Knowing they've got rematches with both yeah, those I think that's players. the thing that gets lost is they both those ball clubs have to come up to Spokane. Yeah. Uh, uh, and play the ball cards. Uh, St. Mary still has to host LMU on their floor, and LMU is a really difficult out. Yeah, I will say this, BYU though. On their floor, so they're going to have to play better Thursday than they have tonight yep. to win the game. Yeah, I think that they need to, and I think they will, look at film. And, and just, if anything, this looks like a tired group to me, right? It really does. To yeah. Me, too. And, Almost and, emotionally yeah, tired. Yeah, I, I just think they need to just be refreshed a bit. And, you know, that's, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. But this team needs to kind of get that, that bounce back in their step, that energy that has made them so good for large stretches of this season. Sacre's been a man from the free throw line. He's taken some heat from the locals here. He's now 9 of 10, 15 points. That's the little gesture to his ear. Here's Baker inside, too hard. Loose ball. Bell runs it down, but stepped on the sideline. 
18.3 to play. Baker, deep three. More the rebound, he missed it. Sacred clears it. And now Pepperdine backs off, and that's going to do it. 72-60, the final score.